Welcome to Web Handling. My name is Dave Roysom. This is the first of a two-part study of oscillation. This study has long been overdue because we are troubled by bagginess, corrugations, gauge bands, and many other so-called winding defects. In some cases, these might be helped by oscillation. This study has long been overdue because we have thousands of oscillators and tens of thousands of guides with no advice on how to set them up. Nor has there been any discussion of what limitations oscillation might have. In this first part, we discuss the whys and hows of oscillation. In the next clip, we will unveil a simple model of oscillation that can help you with recommendations on setting stroke, speed, and other parameters. No web manufacturing and no web converting process will make a perfectly level sheet with regard to basis weight, caliper, density, or thickness. Profile variations and thickness-like properties across the width of the web may be the single largest cause of many winding and some web defects. Shown here is the most common root cause for bagginess that is, stretching over gauge bands. It is the largest cause of bagginess in paper and textiles. It is the cause of nearly all bagginess in other materials, such as film and foil and nonwovens. Bagginess, in turn, is one of the largest causes of wrinkling waste and customer complaints. If, for no other reason than bagginess and wrinkling, we would want to know about oscillation. What may surprise many is just how little diameter difference is needed to wreck a roll. It could be a diameter difference as little as one part in 1,000. What may surprise many is just how little thickness variation is needed to wreck a roll. The range of thickness is on the order of 1 to 10 percent. At 1 percent, you have few complaints. And at 10 percent, you have few customers. Yes, there are exceptions to this rough guideline. Metal foils can't even take that much. Blown film can take a bit more because expectations are low and because it is oscillated 360 degrees to help smear out the streaks. It has been long known that many factors get worse with increasing gauge variation. It has been long known that many defects get worse with roll tightness or hardness. These two concepts have been thoroughly studied and brought together in a landmark iWeb paper by Amy Tour. While there is a role for winding for tight defects, it is quite clear by this study that the winder is limited. After the TNTs have been reduced as far as possible, there is nothing further the winder can do after that to handle thickness variation from upstream manufacturing. At that point, the material is simply not economically windable. The details of this were outlined in a previous Web 201 clip, but are thoroughly discussed in our Web 101 classes. It is not just bagginess and the many troubles it spawns that might be helped by oscillation. Corrugations is another defect that is quite common in all but the thickest of materials. Corrugations are caused by thickness profile variations that have a fingerprint pattern of high-low or especially high-low medium. Corrugations are perhaps the easiest of all defects for oscillation to help because, as we will see in the next clip, the width of the upstream thickness profile is narrow and lane-like. What bagginess and corrugations have in common are three things. One, a streaky 
caliper profile. Two, they're both a tight defect. Three, they are winder limited in how much variation is tolerable without oscillation. However, the principle is much bigger than this. In principle, any tight or loose defect might be improved by oscillation. However, oscillation is especially helpful when the defect is narrow and where there is a risk of tight and loose defects in the same role at the same time. A not at all uncommon situation. All guides can be made to oscillate. All we have to do is to modulate the CD position set point. On a digital guide, this is a trivial addition to the software, merely adding stroke and speed to the input screen. Also, we can guide and oscillate at the same time. The guide types we might consider would include the unwinder or winder at either end of a line. For oscillation in the middle of a line, we can use the displacement or steering guide. We can also use end pivoted or side shifting rollers, but these two devices are much more limited. We will not detail these guides because they were thoroughly covered in my Web 101 class. We also won't cover application in detail in this clip because they vary so much. However, we will just mention that oscillating either before or at the winder is the most common. Still, one might oscillate elsewhere to protect a calendar roller or other process element from getting worn by a streaky web. We can even coordinate the oscillation between an unwind and a winder to protect a process element while also maintaining straight roll edges without trimming. Sometimes we oscillate other elements, such as doctor blades and score slitter anvil rollers instead of oscillating the web itself. Yet, despite all of this potential, we have yet to talk about setting the parameters that include stroke, speed, and shape. These will be detailed in the next clip. For the moment, we will just say this. If you stroke too little, you will not significantly help these profile-related troubles. Conversely, if you stroke too far, you may incur significant economic penalties for trim or loss of market due to stagger winding. Same thing with speed. Too slow and you don't get the job done. Too fast and you run into other problems. And what about oscillation shape? Is a sine wave better than a zigzag? And if so, how much? Is the 360 degree rotation or oscillation of blown film bubble effective? And what about other application guidelines and application limits for oscillation? Thank you so very much for watching this module in my plant practical video series. Stay tuned for the next clip where we will answer these questions and many more.